very good evening, viewer. You're most welcome to the Nile Cast only on West Nile Television, where we give you the daily news bulletins of the day every day from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. My name's Okumringa Christine. Before we dive into any of the stories, let's first have a look at the news making headlines today. In the headlines tonight, Zombo District leaders eulogize the late resident district commissioner, Lieutenant Colonel Pius Alitema. Moyo's NRM verification update not online. And 77,000 people benefit from the Women and Youth Resilience Project in the West Nile region. This and more in the Nile Cast News Bulletin. It's the 14th of March 2024. You're most welcome to the Nile Cast only on West Nile Television. Now let us dive into some of the stories of the evening. Zomba Resident District Commissioner, the late, le the late Lieutenant Colonel Pius Alitema, was eulogized at Zombo District Council, where district councillors, technocrats, members of parliament, and ministers paid their condolences to the deceased and his family. The late Colonel the late Lieutenant Colonel Pius Alitema passed on on the 8th of March 2024 en route to Aurora Regional Faro Hospital. Alfred Jawok reports. Zombo District this afternoon on Thursday 14th March 2024 elogized Lieutenant Colonel Pius Alitema, the resident district commissioner Zombo District, who passed on 8th March 2024 en route to Aurora Regional Faro Hospital while receiving the body to the Council Hall Zombo District Council Speaker Honorable Hassan Ringtho eulogized late Pius Alitema for his good leadership to settle land disputes among the communities of Zombo District. Ringtho advised the councillors to emulate the life of the deceased who educated all his children before his death. Remind what he has performed amidst us and amidst land conflict management, security management, council activities, participation, and management. Leadership of Zombo Town Council, I want to call upon you. Embrace the recommendation which has been passed by this council sitting. I pray that you take courage. We shall be by your side to give all the support. We depart differently. Time has come for his departure. Let's pray that God receives him on his right hand side. Meanwhile, Francis Bolingo, the district councillor for Atomasap County, who doubles as head of opposition in Zombo District, applauded the deceased for giving conducive environment to opposition leaders in Zombo District to express their rights of freedom. We develop Zombo. And I want to this opportunity for entire family that even we opposition we are regretting. We don't know somebody who will come, who will work closely with us on the side of Zombo. We are going to accompany up to where we'll be ready to rest. May God bless him. Amen. Gabriel Okumu, Okoro County Member of Parliament, described the late as an icon of peacemaker and reconciler of peace. The, the life of a pious Alitema, now the fallen, I can describe it like a river which flows. And as that special river flows, the trees and the, the grass which is along the stream, they flourish. This gentleman, when he came to serve as an RDC of Zongo, he belittled himself like a child. And he joined into the community. By far, he has been so far the most successful RDC. Rose Ayikoro Alitema, the widow to Lieutenant Okano Pius Alitema, thanked the people of Zombo District for loving husband during his tenure as resident district commissioner Zombo. Ayikoro blamed government for bad road networks in Zombo District as her husband will not die if the road was favorable 
for emergency. Parliamentary members of members of parliament from West Nile take it upon you. The road of Zombo be made from Nebi to Arua. My husband would have been saved if there was road. What about a pregnant woman? What about a mother who does not even have that car money to take herself to hospital? We are requesting as a family that the road be worked on. However, Grace Kushin Freedom, the State Minister for Northern Uganda, who was the chief mourner, encouraged the family of the deceased to hope as their father has gone to be with the Lord. Kuyuchin said, she informed the president about the deplorable condition of Nebi Zombovura Road as it will be worked on in two phases. Tell me, what answer do I give? No money is economical. But socially and politically, when things are going to other roads and for us it's not coming to us, what answer should I tell the people of Zombo? And the president said, I should tell them this, that the road will be done in two parts. One part from Nebi up to Goli will be done by, by Badea. Badea is Arab Bank for Economic Development for Africa. It will be done by that bank. The portion from Goli through Zumbo up to Vura will be done by ADB, Africa Development Bank. I said this is good message for me. At least this shows there can now be money. Because the, the, before the president spoke and before the president directed, there would be no action. Lieutenant Okano Payasalitema died at the age of 68 and was born on 8th October 1956 and passed on on the way en route to Arua Regional Reform Hospital and the cause of the death has not been divulged by the medical doctors. He was posted at Zumbu RDC on 25th May 2022. He will be laid to rest on Saturday 16th March 2024 at his ancestral home Maracha district. Alfred Jawok, West Nile TV, Nile Cast. And more in our stories. During the rollout of the National Resistance Movement Voters Update exercise in Moyo District, leaders decried of the NRM's voter update registration not being online. The NRM party started the grassroots mobilization in preparation for the 2026 general elections with the update and registration of the new party members from all villages in the country so as to ascertain the number of party members for easy mobilization and coordination of the party activities in the country. Okumu Dominic reports. The exercise which officially began on the 27th of February 2024 with the training of all the District National Resistance Movement District Registrars will climax on Sunday 17th March with village barazas in all the villages across the country with the aim of ascertaining the number of eligible voters in the party as they await for the next coming elections. Honorable Asusi Bisam, the Chairman National Resistance Movement Moyo District who doubles as the Secretary for Finance and Production Moyo District Local Government while rolling out the exercise at his office said the registration of the voters and the updates are not online and cannot be done by proxy he therefore warned those who will not be present in their villages during the exercise will not be registered especially the new members who would like to join the party he urged the public to impress the exercise and should avoid manipulation during the exercise this is an exercise which calls upon everyone to participate. The registration is not online. The registration can't be by proxy. If you are out of the district, if you are out of your village, out of the country, or elsewhere, and you don't come, you will not be registered. I want to call upon my registrars at the village level to, to do what they are 
supposed to do? Mr. Araku Richard, the National Resistance Movement District Registrar for Moyo said, this exercise officially begins the roadmap for 2026 general elections and urged all the public to turn up for the exercise. He also requests all those who wish to contest for political positions to register and to start mobilizations early so as to achieve the needed numbers. And this exercise officially begins the roadmap for 2026. So we encourage everyone to participate. Uh, I call upon politicians who wish to contest in the upcoming uh, NRM structural elections. You need to be, uh, your name has to be available in the register. And this one is possible when you register. And if you want to, to garner enough votes, I request you to mobilize massively. Mr. Edema Martin, the sub-county registrar, Laropi sub-county, expects the village registrars to produce quality work and good updates while performing their duties in their various villages. So my expectation from them is to produce a quality service and a good accommodation, I mean a good, uh, good uh, updates. Mr. Mangui Philip, the parish supervisor for Maria Ward, expects compliance and commitment from the village registrars so as to accomplish the ward in accordance with the national resistance movement policies. So after the training, what I'm expecting from my village registrar is compliance, commitment to ensure that the work we are doing is fully completed in accordance with the guidelines of NRM. The National Resistance Movement Party started ruling the country in 1986 to date and is one of the largest political parties in the country with over 10 million members. The party has now started grassroots mobilization in preparation for the 2026 general elections with the update and registration of the new party members from all the villages in the country so as to ascertain the number of party members for easy mobilization and coordination of party activities in the country. I'm Dominic Antonio Kumu for West Nile TV, Nile Cast. And more in our stories, a total of 77,000 women and youth from the districts of Tarago, Aroa, Gulu, have benefited from the Women, youth, women and Youth Resilience Project, a five-year initiative funded by the Australian Development Agency that ran from the 1st of April 2019 to the 31st of March 2024, whose overall objective is ensuring strength and resilience of refugees, Ugandan women, girls and youth to live a life free of violence. Take a look. A total of 77,000 women and youth from the districts of Tarago, Arua and Gulu have benefited from the Women and Youth Resilience Project, a five-year initiative funded by the Australian Development Agency that ran from the 1st of April 2019 to the 31st of March 2024, whose overall objective is ensuring strength and resilience of refugees, Ugandan women, girls and youth to live a life free of violence. The project exit meeting, which took place at the White Castle Hotel in Aurora City, brought together direct project beneficiaries, district and city local government officials, and development partners like the Office of the Prime Minister, UNHCR, among others, to deliberate on achievements, successes, challenges encountered during the implementation of the project and the lessons learned. Leco Vincent Jura. A community-based facilitator stated that the project empowered him to support his family and also to encourage the communities to desist from domestic violence. So from uh, the time I got married, I had nothing like uh, how I would run the family, how you need to stay in your family. But since I came in, I got to know what to do, how to support my family. So we started talking to our community members, at least a few of the community members also, changed and they are happily living with their families. Naomi Akara, the project manager for Women and Youth Resilience Project, stated that this project has four result areas such as women economic empowerment, prevention of gender-based violence, response to gender-based violence and government accountability on the relevant frameworks and laws which are meant to create awareness about the rights of women. Direct beneficiaries for this project are 77,000 and 68 percent of them are females. So uh, this project has four result areas that we focus on. First one is women's economic empowerment. So we have a total of 287 PSLA groups. The third result area which is focused on 
uh, uh, response, comprehensive response to gender-based violence. Of course, we work on all forms of GBV. And we work very closely with justice, law, and other sector, which includes the, 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 the court of law, the director of public prosecution, the house, police, and other civil society organizations that work in GBV response. The fourth result area looks at government uh, accountability. And all this is basically to create awareness about the rights and, uh, you know, the rights of women uh, within uh, the different platforms. Jabo Filiam, the LC3 chairperson of Omugo Sub-County Terrago District, thanked Care International for including the local government authorities in the implementation of the projects in the region. I want to appreciate the care and uh, where it project in the first place care did not leave us particularly us gov uh, local government out in implementing her project in Masam County uh, what, whatever they have planned for the sub county they never left us behind particularly the sub county authorities we're so grateful. Gonza Justin, the Assistant Community Services Officer under the Office of the Prime Minister, took the opportunity to request the leaders of Omogu Parish to take advantage of the facilities established for the development of the region. I wanted this opportunity to request the governors of the parish of Omogu leaders to please help us and talk to the hosts. It's so absurd to see that uh, we are the landlords, we are the hosts. You bring a visitor in your home, but the, the, the visitor is benefiting so much, uh, better than you. The schools have been built, there are good schools, there are good teachers there. But when we go there to supervise to see how many nationals are attending school, to your surprise, out of 1,000 population in the school, you will get only three hosts, children. At the end of the day, the refugees are the ones taking on the lead, and our children are the beggars. They are the ones splitting firewood in those schools where the refugees are living. Right Honorable Toko Samuel, the Prime Minister for Luke Barakari Cultural Institution, stated that the institution is coming up with new practices to address the challenges of gender-based violence among the Lugbara people. When it comes to gender-based violence, it is around uh, the sticky norms, practices and customs of the people that the chairman alluded here. We are fighting the negative ones and bringing on board the positive ones. The issue of women handling land, owning it, and so on have been very difficult in the local sector. But already it is changing. Emma called Peter John Onyango, the Terragood Deputy Resident District Commissioner, urged the people to register and update their NRM membership from the 13th to the 17th of March 2024. Remember 13th to 17th is a day of registering in NRM books. If you want care to continue to 2029 properly, please go and register. Those of you who are going to vote here, register in the NRM book. When you register, then you determine care to continue and you determine the peace to continue. Charles Ikogor. The resident city commissioner of our city pledged to work together with the development partners to ensure project success. He further warned the briefcase non-government organizations to leave our city within two weeks or face the long arm of the law. I want to promise you, I want to promise you, Stephen and Kiki, that we will promise to you the Our intelligence is now getting those NGOs and we 
are going to give them two weeks to quit Arua City. They can go to Terego, they can go somewhere else. If you are a briefcase, briefcase, you should not be in the city because Arua City is the renaissance of West Nile. We want to see impact that has been exhibited by, by Stafford. And Care International Uganda has initiated the Gender Equality and Resilience Project with funding from the Australian Development Agency as a follow-up from WEREP Project. Okumaringa Christine, for West Nile Television, now cast. Been asked to en ensure reporting gender-based violence cases as the case and your 1,681 cases are, were registered for domestic violence, as 14,846 sex-related and also got recorded as well, as 10,741 child-related offenses were also recorded. Parish Majid reports. Members of the community whose rights are being violated under gender-based violence have been asked to ensure reporting the cases such that they can get help. This comes at a time where cases of gender-based violence affecting families still continue to be on the rise in West Nelson region at the Child and Family Protection Unit of Uganda Police. Assistant Inspector of Police Richard Christine, the officer in charge of Child and Family Protection Unit Arua City, confirmed the cases, which she says is still very high amidst the several campaigns in place. Uh, according to the statistics, on the GBV, when we look at the GBV issues, it is overwhelming. There is no specific time we can say that this, this price is going down because if we look at the data, when we look at the data, you get for this month it can be high, then next month it comes down. At times for the very month it can be down, for you will not be so that since it has come down, it will continue to be down. But your surplus you will get that very month it has gone up. The tourist observes that. The violations of rights in families cuts across both men and women, yet some men may opt not to report the cases because of fears of being judged by the society. The entity registered 12 cases by men in December, and 13 cases were registered by men in the month of January, as well as 10 cases were registered by men in the month of February 2024. Which means the domestic violence is not only against women and the girls. It is, but it is men, women and the girls all together. Because there are some women who are so very violent outside there, they violate the rights of their husbands. Which means, if we can only say we are fighting domestic violence against women and, and the girls, men are going to be left out. And why these men's cases are low, it's simply because of the shame. Men feel very proud. Whether they are injured, they don't want to report because they feel when they report, their friends are going to laugh at them, which is not true. Megiti Jonah, the Deputy Resident City Commissioner for Rua in charge of IV Division says that as security they strongly condemn the vice. As government, we condemn it um, and uh, we have put uh, in place mechanisms of trying to fight it because we feel that uh, uh, human rights must be respected. In West Nile sub-region, which is said to be second to Busoga in leading gender-based violence cases, tradition has been blamed for the low cases in reporting where families believe reporting to police may result into cases common known as Aruba. However, Anguyo Jimmy Baiga, the West Nile region of local person for gender-based violence urges all stockholders to work together in ending gender-based violence within the sub-region. To end this vice in our community, you and me, leaders, let's work together to make sure that we make an end to this violence against the girls and the women. Yes, someone could say the women are also fighting the men, but the statistics are clear that the men are the main perpetrators. There are far. The figures we're having in, in record are saying the men are the main perpetrators. As per the 2023 annual police crime report released recently, 14,681 cases of domestic violence were registered, 14,846 sex-related cases also got recorded, as well as 10,741 child-related offences were recorded. Farish Majid, West Nile TV, Nilecast. 
And more in our stories, in commemoration of the International Women's Day, women have been urged to embrace sexual reproductive health rights, education attainment, and financial inclusion in the West Nile region. This was revealed during the a Women and Girls Conference, which brought together key stakeholders from Arua, Terago, and Madikolo District. Take a look. In commemoration of the International Women's Day, Restless Development in partnership with Care International under the Sexual Reproductive Health and Economic Empowerment Supporting Out-of-School Adolescent Girls' Rights and Skills Project held a Women and Girls Conference that brought together women and girls representatives from Arua City, Madiokolo and Terago District to discuss the key challenges that women and girls face in relation to gender, sexual and reproductive health rights, financial inclusion and education attainment in the West Nile region. This women conference were basically brought together the key the community gatekeepers. These are people who, who matter within the community, who are able to speak, who are able to take decisions, who are able to you know, uh, impl uh, put in place the rightful policies. And these policies, in case they're put in place and they, they implement the right in find that access to education, access to health services, and access to more economic opportunities for women will become much easier. Aikoru Sande, the local council five vice chairman, Terago District, is urging women to have courage to admit the challenges they are facing in achieving financial inclusion so as to get positive solutions. She further encouraged women saying they are capable of accessing financial assistance like their counterpart, men. Women need to come out boldly and accept that there are challenges. But how can they change these challenges in the positive mode? In so many ways, the banks can have restrictions because they want to know whether your husband can accept or repeat the loan. And yet you are mature. You are already above the age of 18. You can make your own decision and get your own funds for the whole community. What we can already do for women to empower them is to give them the message, the knowledge that they, they are capable accessing uh, funds in any, way, any other way like the men can get money from the bank can benefit women can benefit from government programs provided that you have the capacity if you want women to access financial uh, inclusion for better economic development we need to begin right now educate the girl child when the girl child will be educated meaning this will be a woman who is empowered in the future and will be able to make decisions you know when you are educated you can make decisions this woman will be able to make decisions and can decide for himself what to do can acquire land and build her own so so if women are empowered and so many things are given to them, financial ways will open for them, they will know the purpose of borrowing, why you should not borrow. If it is for education, they will gain this business, uh, money of uh, borrowing, education happens. Senior Superintendent of Police Anguchia Josephine, the West Nile Police Box person who was one of the keynote speakers, urged the she saw as partner representatives and key stakeholders to include the women and girls in access to information, particularly in their rights and roles in the society. Anguchia Josephine further noted that many women are ignorant of their sexual reproductive health rights because they are denied knowledge and abused. Hence, this conference has provided a platform to inform and empower people of the importance of women's sexual reproductive health rights. When we look at uh, uh, this year's theme for Women's Day celebrations, it was all about inspiring inclusion, meaning that women need to be included in all aspects of life. Many times women are left behind, they only concentrate on the other opposite sex. Uh, many times uh, because of, of maybe the societal beliefs, uh, these patriarchic uh, uh, norms and the beliefs, the stereotypes, uh, women tend to lag behind. They tend not to be included in certain areas, and that's why they end up uh, not really uh, uh, getting all the rights that they need. So by uh, inspiring inclusion, we need to include women uh, with access uh, to knowledge. We need to include them in the area of accessing information. They need to be informed, particularly about their rights. They need to be informed about their roles. 
they need to be informed about the, how things are happening in the society. Very many women do not know of their rights in that area, and uh, that's why many women are not really, uh, they, they are not able to enjoy their rights when it comes to uh, sexual and reproductive health issues. They don't enjoy the rights, their rights are violated. They are not even involved in some areas. Information is denied to them, especially the rural women, uh, where it's felt that these women are not supposed to actually talk about such matters, especially where sex and reproductive health is concerned. Uh, we are able to uh, inform, empower our people that women also have got uh, the rights as far as sexual and reproductive uh, health is concerned and their rights are supposed to be preserved by all institutions including the society generally. The Women and Girls Conference presented a unique opportunity for women and girls to share experiences, learn from each other and build networks to support access to sexual reproductive health, financial inclusion and education attainment in the West Nile region. Okumaringa Christine for West Nile Television, Nile Cast. And more in our stories, during the commissioning of Hotel Aregan in Ajimani District, leaders of Madi Sap region appealed for presidential clarification on Madi Upper border issues. Onzema Alan reports. Leaders of Madi Sap region appealed for presidential clarification on Madi Upper border issues. In the presence of Deputy Speaker of Parliament of Republic of Uganda during his commissioning of Hotel Aga Khan, Hapa crisis had claimed lives of many people since the tension arose due to economic-driven factor over the nature of the land. Honorable Mamawi James, the area member of Parliament at Jumani East, expressed his disdain due to the killing of people in Hapa. He emphasized on the issues of the president making clarification on APA. Honorable Mamawi James further highlighted the community has tried their best to curb the situation of illegal charcoal business, adding that everybody is aware of the three presidential executive order. It is okay. Uh, the deputy speaker is very clear that the president is pursuing this matter of which he has appointed the commission, judicial commission of inquiry to handle the issue of APA and goes back with the report to His Excellency the President. Aware such uh, development is coming, but what we are requesting from government is we want them to quicken the process, we want them to fast track the process. Setting a commission of inquiry alone is not enough. What we want is let them come and do what they wanted to do. Then they give a report and President make his final decision as far as APA is concerned. Because he's the only person now we are waiting to, 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 to get a clarity and want to get his view over APA. There is, Parliament has nothing to do much over the issue of APA. And the Speaker was very clear here that now the matter is with the President in terms of negotiation and other things. Therefore, we also want to see that this is done. Last week we were in the Parliament, we, are, we did a press review, but all we say is can President come boldly and bring these people to solve the matter? If you say that this matter is going to be concluded by the Commission of Inquiry, yes, let them come, do their work, they give us a report whether it favors us or not. We wanted that report. Honorable Ababiku Jeska, the woman member of Parliament at Jumani District, emphasized that the issue of APA is clearly in the hands of the President and for the meantime they expect clarification from the State House concerning the issue of APA since APA is some miles worth 10 kilometers in a Jumani District. She said if the matter is not settled, the evil of shedding blood will be cause to our nation, which in time is not good. She further stated that people of Jumani are very hospitable without segregation of anyone and we gave him enough time so we believe this is the time for him to act this continuous blood said in a human is uncalled for he made several declarations that a power is in a human so let him tell the other people to leave our land those who want to stay with us let them use the procedures of accessing a place and occupying. We are hospital people. Adjumani is not limited for only Mumaris. And we have other tribes apart from Adjumani. So, Adjumani is hospitable. 
Let them use the procedures. Let them leave us to manage our issues of Ajuman. Ajuman district local government is competent of governing its own people. Due to the economic demand and nature of our land, the two sister tribes of Mani and Acholi enacted tension which has per now claimed over a hundred single lives of people in the area. According to the demarcation, Apala is 10 kilometers deep in the heart of Ajumani district and as per now it stands that the area has collections of multiple tribes who live in makeshift mining on economic activities such as farming, charcoal burning and logging woods which has now fully attributed to destruction of natural resources of Zoka. Therefore, the leaders feel great if the president makes crucial clarification on the extrajudicial killings. The chief guest, right honorable deputy speaker of parliament, honorable Thomas Tayebua, on the issues of upper land asked the people of Germany to be peaceful since the matter is in the hands of parliament. He further said the president is the in charge, but still he will have voice to explain to the president. Uh, the issue of our power, yes, this is a very, very critical uh, issue. It's an issue uh, where I don't admire being in the president's position because each side is on the extreme in terms of the position they've taken. You know, in negotiation, they decide to call Zopa. A Zopa is a zone of possible agreement. So when you're negotiating, us who are certified and professional negotiators, when you're negotiating, there is always a red, a red line on this extreme, a red line on this extreme, and a green line in between. So both sides must work hard if they are indeed negotiating in good faith, what what is coming to the green? That is meeting in the middle. So this is an issue which I know is very each side is having very extreme positions, very extreme views, but the president decided to appoint a commission of inquiry led by the former Chief Justice. Who has no any interest in this area? I, I spoke to him when I was uh, uh, seated there, and I'm going to meet him when I reach in Kampara. We see how quickly they can expedite the process. And I request when the report comes out, because I know it's going to be as conservative as possible, you work together as leaders, you work with the president, and you get a solution. Otherwise, I sympathize for those whose rights have been affected, and we hope, come to our support, for us, once the position is reached, we as parliament we shall come in support you. We believe you can get a fair conclusion to this issue so that we Ugandans uh, can not live in this country in peace. Mukulia Lawrence, Onjima Alan, West Nile TV, Nilecast.
Good evening, viewers. It's the right time for you to get to know what is happening around in the world of sports. My name is Oraku Benson Pastore. Stories continues to break every day in the world of sports. And let's kick start our discussion with what is happening within the region of West Nile, more especially within the city of Arua. It's all about the fixers that have already been released by Arua City as far as in the school ball games are concerned. Remember the group stages we are released some few days ago. And let's take a look at the fixers of the world. We have uh, in Group A, we have schools like St. Peter's Aliba Senior Secondary School, Mandbe Public Senior Secondary School, Arua says the defending champions also in the list. Standard College, not forgetting about Soma Senior Secondary School and lastly, Destiny Senior Secondary School. Let's now take a look at the fixers to be played tomorrow. Remember, these games are set to commence tomorrow. Tomorrow is the 15th of March and the year is 2024. Let's take a look at the fixers. The days shall be opened in Group A by a game between St. Peter's Aliba Senior Secondary School hosting destiny then after that expect the defending champions are in a secondary school to welcome man by public senior secondary school after that particular encounter standard college will be saying hi to soma senior secondary school and the second last game will be a game between Arua Senior Secondary School as they take on St. Peter's Aliba Senior Secondary School. And the last game to be played tomorrow in Group A will be a game between Manbe Public Senior Secondary School and the school is called Standard College Senior Secondary School and these games are taking place at Elifra. And then in Group B, we have got the runners up of last season. I am talking about Invara Senior Secondary School, Arua Town College Senior Secondary School, the champions of 2022. We have Latiba Fonteson, Pokia Seminary, the landlord, Arua Academy, and lastly, Mitsu Senior Secondary School. And their games are taking place at Pokia Seminary Senior Secondary School Playground. And taking a look at the fixers to be played tomorrow, the day shall be opened by a game between Invara Senior Secondary School and a school called Arua Town College Senior Secondary School. The runners up of last season taking on the champions of 2022. And then after that, Latibo will be hosting Arua Academy. And then Pokia Seminary, the landlord will be taking uh, will be will be actually saying hi to Mitsu Senior Secondary School. And the second last game will be a game between Arua Academy and Mvara Senior Secondary School. And the days shall be finalized by a game between Arua Town College and Latibo Foundation. And this one takes us to Group C, where we have got the likes of Cornerstone, we have a Republic, not forgetting about the newcomers. I'm talking about St. Joseph's College on Batsy, because the last two years they have not been into the competition. We have got All Saints and lastly, a late comer. And taking a look at the games to be played tomorrow in day one, Cornerstone shall open the day with a game up against a Republic. And then after that, expect St. Joseph's College on Batsy to host that's uh, all sense. Then a uh, in a second of school will take on a late karma in case it's there. Then after that particular encounter, Cornerstone will be playing the team that's uh, St. Joseph's College on Batsi. And tomorrow it will be concluded in that venue by a game between a Republic Senior Secondary School and All Saints. And all these games are taking place at Aliba City Senior Secondary School Playground. That's in RA Division. And then let's finalize the fixers in Group D where we have got a Pop Paul Memorial, the team which proceeded last season up to the up to the same finals before being knocked out by Varasina Secondary School. They are in the same pit. Uh, alongside schools like Excel College, we have got Tarantino, Arua Islamic, there is Naza Muslim, not forgetting about it. Niva High, formerly known as Nile High Yitia. Don't get confused, Niva High is actually the school called the Nile High Yitia. They have been rebranded of late as Niva High. And then taking a look at the fixers to be played in day one tomorrow. Pop Paul Memorial will take on Excel Global. After that, there will be a game between Arua Islamic and taking on Tarantino. And then Naza Muslim will say hi to Niva High or as Nile High Yitia. And then after that, Pop Paul will be tussled it out with Arua Islamic. And then Naza will lock horns with Excel. And the last game to be played tomorrow in Group D will be a game between Tarantino as they will be locking horns with Pop Paul. And their games are taking place at Ombatsi. And this one takes us to what is happening in Star Times, Uganda Premier League, whereby tomorrow we'll be having two huge encounters. Ball will be locking horns with the Sports Club Villa. And this game will be at 6 p.m. Not 6 p.m., rather. 4 p.m. East African time. Then after that, the biggest of it in Star Times Uganda Premier League of late, we'll see a class between sports, sports club Vipers as they take on the team of Kasasiro boys. I mean, KCA. Right now, you look at the table standing. 
KCC, they are sitting at number 10 with 26 points. Meanwhile, Sports Club Vipers, they sit somewhere at number 4 with something of around 35 points. And the class is tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. And the kickoff time will be at 7 p.m. East African time. This one is, is, is making us to jet to Europe. It's all about UEFA Champions League, Europa Conference, not forgetting about UEFA Europa League updates. The UEFA Champions League round of 16 games have come to an end. And let's take a look at the teams that have already sealed the ticket to the quarterfinals. Before we take a look at the teams, remember it came to an end yesterday night where we had two games on the card. Atletico Madrid knocking out Inter Milan. And then on the other side, at Signal Eduna Park, we saw the team of Borussia Dortmund beating the team of PSV Eindhoven by two goals to nil. And goals came from Jadon Sancho, the player from Manchester United, on loan at the club, and also the veteran Marcos Rood, of course, sending Borussia Dortmund to the quarterfinals. Now, taking a look at the teams that are already through to the quarterfinals, we have got Real Madrid. The, 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 the Real Madrid is one of them. Manchester City is another team, not forgetting about Paris Saint-Germain. Bayern Munich is another one. Uh, Arsenal that comes from England is another team, not forgetting about Barcelona that comes from Catalonia, from Spain, is another team. We have got Atletico Madrid together with Dortmund uh, that finalized the night in the in the quarterfinals in the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League. The draws for the quarterfinals will be tomorrow and it will be taking place in Nyom, one of the cities in Switzerland. We are waiting to see how the draws are going to be done. And let's take a look at the updates coming from UEFA Europa League and the Europa Conference. It's all about the reverse fixers of the round of sixteen in these two games. In these two tournaments rather. Remember VRL will be taking on Olympic de Marcel, the first league of this encounter ended by four goals to one. It was Marcel that won it in, in that won it in France. And then you expect a game between Rangers at Ibrox as they take on Soccer Lisboa Benfica. Last week they went away to Estadio da Luz. It ended 2-2. After that, West Ham will be hosting a team called Freiburg. The first league of this game ended by goal to nil. It was Freiburg that won in German. Then Liverpool ran riot over the team of Sparta Prague uh, uh, away from home. Now they'll be maintaining Anfield as they take on the reverse fixer. Brighton and Hoof Albion of England this time is, taking at, uh, is staying at Amex Stadium and is taking on S Roma. The first league of this game ended by four goals to nil. It was S Roma that humiliated Brighton and Hoof Albion at home. Then Atalanta in the first league, they had to share the spoil with Sporting Lisbon. Now they'll be looking forward to see which team will be in person to make it to the quarterfinals of UEFA Europa League. Bayer Leverkusen got it late against Karabag in the first league encounter, which ended 2-2. This time it's taking place at Bayer Arena as Bayer Leverkusen takes on Karabag. And the last game we'll actually see AC Milan staying at San Siro as they take on Slavia Prague. And the first league of this game ended by four goals to two. It was AC Milan that won. Now in UEFA Europa Conference, uh, UEFA Europa Conference League, Victoria Plezen is taking on the team of Savet that comes from Switzerland. The first league of this game ended in a barren draw. And then Farnabate in the first league encounter led the team called Union Central Gloise that comes from Belgium by three goals to nil. Now it is the reverse fixer. Pao Fesolenica that comes from Greece is taking on Dynamo Zagreb. The first league of this game ended by two goals to nil. It was Dynamo Zagreb that won over Pao. And then Fiorentina will be staying in Italy as they take on Maccabi Haifa that comes from Israel. The first league of this game was an aging result for Fiorentina which ended by four goals to three. And then there was a barren draw between Aston Villa and the team of Ajax Amsterdam and they will be locking horns tonight to see that one side will have to proceed to the quarterfinals. Club Bruce that comes from Belgium will take on Molde that comes from Norway. The first league of this game ended by two goals to one and Lille Trail the stamp grades of Austria by three goals to nil is now the reverse fixer. And the last year, expect an encounter between Maccabi Tel Aviv that comes from Israel as they will be taking on Olympiakos Peru that comes from Greece. The first league of this particular encounter ended by four goals to one. It was the team called Maccabi Tel Aviv that comes from Israel leading Olympiakos. Now let's finalize everything with a very big story coming from the camp of Gunners. It's all about one player, Ben White, extending his contact with the team of Gunners. He joined Gunners way back in 2021 from the team of Brighton and Hoof Albion. It was at a fee of 50 million pounds and in total 
he has had 97 appearances for the team of Arsenal. This season, he has been actually a key figure in the team of Arsenal so far in 27 in English Premier League. That one brings us to the end of today's edition of Nanka Sports News. It has been me, Benson Pastore, in front of the camera. Let's link up again tomorrow. Thank you, Rako Benson Pastor, for that sports news and that sports highlight. That marks the end of the Nile cast only on West Nile Television. Thank you always, viewers, for taking the time to be with us from the beginning of the Nile cast to the end of the Nile cast only on West Nile Television. Please stay tuned to the rest of the subsequent programs that may follow. My name